Hello everybody, this is Sam I Am from Iraq Currency Watch. Hope you're doing well. I uh, just wanted to uh, provide a few little links for you to look at to help you understand a little bit more about this investment. Let's start off with uh, the CBI website, cbi.iq. And uh, if you look down on the left toward the bottom, you'll see it says statistics. So click on statistics. It takes you to a page where you have a lot of different links. What we want to look at is the key financial indicators. Now that's going to open up an Excel spreadsheet. So you'll either need Microsoft Excel or you'll need to download the free version of OpenOffice, which will give you the ability to view Excel spreadsheets. But this is going to open up a, uh, an accounting from the CBI of their money supply. You'll see M1, M2 down somewhere around line uh, 85. It's 85 as of the time of this recording. Those, uh, those change around from time to time depending on how they arrange this statement. But it's somewhere between 70 and 90, 95, somewhere around there. You'll find the money supply, M1 and M2. Now, if you will look at the figure for December of 2015, because uh, as of now, that's the last one that's in white. The, the rest are in yellow, which means those are tentative numbers. Uh, they're still analyzing all of the data. So in December of 2015, the M1 money supply was 60, uh, 65,435 dinar. Now, this is, as you see right above it, it says money supply end of period in billions of Iraqi dinars. So 65,000 means 65,000 billion or 65 trillion. So when you read this, 65,435, that means 65 trillion, 435 billion in Iraqi dinars in billions of Iraqi dinars. So this is not including US dollars as I think Stryker has suggested. No, their money supply does not inc include US dollars. This is all Iraqi dinars. 65 trillion 435 billion as of December 2015. Okay, so uh, if you now at the bottom you'll see a horizontal scroll bar. And if you'll go down and scroll to the left, you can see the numbers going all the way back to 2003, December of 2003, when they first introduced the IQD. And you will see that these numbers have steadily increased. Now, they haven't increased much over the last couple of years because uh, they've fallen on hard times with the dropping oil prices and oil revenues. But this was the case from 2003 until 2014. The money supply was steadily increasing. So anybody who tells you they're reducing the money supply, they're lying to you. Now, it's true that they have reduced the note count. And some of these gurus will try to be cute and word it that way. They're reducing the note count. Well, so what? Okay, yeah, they pulled in a lot of the lower denominations that people weren't using, and they issued notes, uh, 50,000 notes, 50,000 dinar notes. So that reduced the note count. There's not as many notes in circulation, but that doesn't mean the money supply is going down. If you have a $100 bill, and I have $101 bills, and you hand me that $100 bill, and I hand you my $101 bills, I have reduced my note count, but I have not reduced my money supply. I had $100 before, I have $100 now. But I had 100 notes before, now I only have one note. You see, 
note count and money supply are not connected because you have different representations for the value for the unit of currency so don't let anybody fool you by saying well they're reducing the note count so they're reducing the money supply no they're reducing the note count because people weren't using those lower denoms because the value is so low but they haven't reduced the money supply as the figures here clearly show you okay next what we want to do is we want to see the figures for Iraq's foreign currency reserves because this is how they're backing their currency they're not backing it with oil anybody who tells you that they are they're lying to you all of the all of the oil producing economies of that region Saudi Arabia Qatar United Arab Emirates Kuwait uh, whoever they're all backing their currency they're all pegged currencies and they're all backing their currency with their foreign currency reserves of US dollars euros uh, or a basket of currency whatever but uh, they they back their currencies with foreign currency reserves not with oil nobody backs their currency with oil nobody backs their currency with gold anymore except I think maybe a couple of countries in Europe still do now many countries will include gold in the in along with their foreign currency reserves as far as securities but they don't back it with gold in the way that uh, countries backed their currencies with gold during the days of the gold standard in the in the 20th century so <clears throat> let's go to wikipedia and find i'll provide all the links for this in the description to the video but if you go to the wikipedia page that shows you um, the the foreign currency reserves listed by country you will see that Iraq's foreign currency reserves as of December 31st 2015 were 57 thousand uh, and 70 now again you have to remember this is listed in millions so 57 million is 57 billion and 70 million that's what they have as of December 31st 2015 that's what they had in their foreign currency reserves so what we want to do in order to find out where Iraq's currency should be valued we want to go to Google Calculator and what we're going to do is we're going to divide the amount in their foreign currency reserves by the amount in their M1 money supply. Now the foreign currency reserves were 57 billion and 70 million. So you type in five seven zero seven zero 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 divided by the M1 money supply figure that we just looked at, 65 trillion 435 billion. So enter that into your Google calculator and hit equals and you will see that the answer is 0 .000872 so if you divide their foreign currency reserves by their M1 money supply then that puts the value of the currency at about 0 .000872 now let's take the figure from the CBI website Currently, their currency is uh, valued at 11.82 to the dollar. So what we want to do now is divide one dollar by 11.82 to find out the current value of the Iraqi dinar. And you will see that it's 0.000846. So that's the current value, and the potential value is 0 .00087. So you can see they got a little room to pump it up, but not enough to make anybody rich, probably not even enough to break even on the investment, let alone make any profit. These are the cold hard facts, folks. Iraq's currency right now is valued about where it should be. 
The only way that you're going to be able to get a big revaluation is if they get a big windfall into their foreign currency reserves in the amount of trillions of dollars. And that's not very likely. Or if suddenly everything in Iraq stabilizes and just, you know, becomes a uh, paradise overnight and they decide, well, we don't need to back our currency 100% anymore. We're only going to back it 5% because the world has so much confidence in Iraq and our currency now. Uh, how likely is that? Okay. So, no, things are not going to change anytime soon. This is where the currency should be valued a little less than a tenth of a penny. There's no big RV coming, not when you look at the numbers here. Now, some people say, well, we're going to go to a global currency reset and everything's going to change and they're going to be allowed to monetize the oil in the ground and they've got billions or, or trillions of dollars worth of oil sitting there in the ground. Well, currencies are not backed by consumable products. That makes no sense. <laughs> currencies are backed either with foreign currency reserves or precious metals. But a consumable product like oil, what are you going to do as you burn that oil up? You don't have any, any more of the product to back the currency. It makes no sense to back a currency with a consumable product. So that's why you don't do it. It, uh, you know, gold and silver and precious metals <clears throat> are much more stable than a consumable product, and even gold and silver are difficult to use in backing a currency because the valuations fluctuate so much. That's why we have the system that we have, because it's the best system that we've been able to come up with until now. People who want to go back to the gold reserve don't understand the reason we got away from the gold standard uh, is because of all the problems that were inherent in the system. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the money supply stuff. Now, you'll hear people sometimes talk about, well, Iraq said that they want to RV to $1.13 and then they're going to bump it on up to three twenty or so. They're basing that on this document that I'm about to show you, like I said, all of the uh, links are going to be, be provided in the description. But here on the uh, website for the Ministry of Planning, you will see this feasibility study. Now, I've highlighted the two crucial lines in this study. One says, uh, look toward the bottom, and it says, Estimate the amended exchange rate of the Iraqi dinar to be used in technical and economic feasibility studies and for uh, $1.13 per dinar. This price should be approved for three years, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is where they get that $1.13 figure. And then they say they're eventually going to bump it up to $3.20. If you look at the top where I've got that highlighted, it says the dinar for less that they're they're calling for assessing the dinar for less than three dollars and twenty cents and then it says official exchange rate the iqd's value has never been three dollars and twenty cents that's never been the official exchange rate for the iqd it's never been worth even one tenth of a penny since it was introduced so how can they say that this is the official exchange rate of the dinar. This is the old dinar from the Saddam Hussein era. And I'm about to prove that to you. Uh, if you go up to the top, you'll see where it says planning budget. Click that, and it will take you to another page. And it says... Regulations number one for the year of 1984 and its amendment for the year of 1990. That shows you that this report was from the 80s and then it was amended in 1990. See, Saddam's dinar was overvalued, grossly overvalued, and this is why they were recommending reducing the value from 320 down to a dollar 13 and then they said in three years we're going to reassess 
the valuation to see if that's justifiable. But there's nothing in here about the coalition provisional authority. There's nothing in here about the IQD. There's nothing in here about any of the modern conditions in Iraq. This is the, from the Saddam Hussein era. Now, the line uh, that I have uh, underlined, the link that I have underlined down here, says the exchange rate of foreign currency in economic feasibility studies. Uh, that link will take you to the first page that we looked at with the $1.13 and $3.20 valuations. So you can see the gurus have been misrepresenting this feasibility study. It has nothing to do with the IQD. It was from the Saddam era about the Saddam dinar. And they weren't recommending raising the value to $1.13 and then to $3.20. They were recommending reducing the value from $3.20 down to $1.13 and then reassessing it every few years to see if it needs to be further reduced. So don't let anybody mislead you about this. The value of the dinar is right where it needs to be. There is no way in the world you could justify a valuation of $1.13, let alone three twenty. In all likelihood, it's never going to be worth more than a tenth of a penny. I'm sorry to break this to you, but I had to go through this reality check myself five years ago, and nothing has changed. Now, another thing I want to uh, show you is some information about the Vietnamese dong. You will hear people from time to time say, yes, the dong is ready to go. The dong is ready to be revalued. They're going to raise the value of the dong. China, China's on board or or China's, you know, willing to allow it, or, or whatever conditions. That's all nonsense. Okay, China doesn't have anything to do with the value of Vietnam's currency, and Vietnam has no intention of revaluing their currency, and I'm about to show you evidence of that. Right here, this is Wikiinvest. This is where people post different articles from the investment world. And it says the government has pushed to lower the value of the dong in the hopes of pushing up exports and fostering export-oriented economic growth. So this is the policy of the government of Vietnam. They want the dong's value to, to slowly be devalued, to have the value slightly incrementally lowered from time to time because that helps them develop their exports because it's cheaper to do business with them, right? It's cheaper to buy their products if their currency uh, loses value. And here is a chart to show you that this is exactly what they're doing. You can find this. I've got the link to the chart. Uh, but you can see since 2012, there's been a steady decline in the value of the dong. This is their policy. This is not me saying this. This is Vietnam saying this. We want the dong's value to slowly devalue so that it's cheaper to do. Now, they can't do it too quickly, or that could throw them into hyperinflation. But they, you know, it's very tightly managed and monitored to make sure that it helps them develop their exports without throwing their currency into hyperinflation. So those are the cold hard facts about the Vietnamese dong. It isn't going to revalue. They don't want it to revalue. They want it to devalue. They want it to go down slowly, incrementally, to keep their exports growing. And it works. It's worked very well for them. Their economy over the past 10, 12 years has tripled in value, their GDP. So these are just a few little things that you're not going to hear from the gurus because this would hurt their bottom line. If people knew the facts, as I've just pointed them out to you, they would lose heart. Just like I lost heart, just like many other people, probably tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people over the last five years have gotten an education on how this works and they have decided okay I got fooled this thing isn't going to happen I'm going to move on to something else there's a few stragglers there's a few 
people for whatever reason haven't had access to this information yet so I was thinking maybe if I put a video out there on YouTube then people will find the information and then they'll understand okay so thanks for watching we'll see you in the next podcast